For in war, the chief incalculable is the human will, which manifests itself in resistance, which in turn lies in the province of tactics. Strategy has not to overcome resistance except from nature. Its purpose is to diminish the possibility of resistance, and it seeks to fulfill this purpose by exploiting the elements of movement and surprise. Now that's cool and everything. I would say that there's definitely, that's a stretch because we've seen collect the collective will of a people change the outcome of strategic situations for sure. So even though I said, hey, it's, it's closer to, it still can have a huge impact. I mean, look at Vietnam. It was like, oh, well, we, we can beat them because we can kill 150 Vietnamese soldiers and Viet Cong soldiers for every one of our people that killed. So we'll win. No, actually, we won't win. Right. Because guess what? The, at their collective will is freaking incredibly strong. Yeah. But movement and surprise. Movement lies in the physical sphere and depends on calculation of the conditions of the time, topography, and transport capacity. By transport capacity is meant both the both the means by which and the measure in which force can be moved and maintained. Okay, so there's the physical fear, sphere of movement. Surprise lies in the psychological sphere and depends on a calculation far more difficult than in the physical sphere of the manifold conditions varying in each case which are likely to affect the will of the opponent. So you got two things. You've got movement and you've got surprise. This is how we're gonna kinda win. This is how we're gonna win, by movement and surprise. Movement, physical, surprise, psychological. Although strategy may aim more at exploiting movement than at exploiting surprise, or conversely, the two elements react on each other. So even though they're different spheres, they're still closely woven together. Movement generates surprise, and surprise gives impetus to movement. So this is jujitsu, right? If you surprise somebody, they have to react to it. So you can make someone move by surprising them with something. For a movement which is accelerated or changes its direction inevitably carries with it a degree of surprise, even though it be concealed while surprise smooths the path of movement by hindering the enemy's countermeasures and counter movements. So if I surprise you, you don't have time to react to it. You're not defending it. Yeah. This is... Obviously not something this guy was thinking about when I think about flying in stealth airplanes. Mm-hmm. The psychology of that mm-hmm. is what I what I have discovered, and it's true not just in an airplane, it's true in every situation. More often than not, people's reaction to being surprised is not the right reaction. They don't usually react well. Mm-hmm. Even when they react, it's still like an overreaction, underreaction. Think about how you react to when you're surprised. Are those usually like good, smooth, effective responses? 100%. Yeah, all the time. <laughs> and when when you look at stealth airplanes, the advent of Americans showing up with stealth airplanes, and, and sort of the culminating event really was in Desert Storm when nobody even knew we had them. And all of a sudden, stealth airplanes are over Baghdad dropping bombs. And the Iraqis, didn't under, they did not understand what was happening. And their reaction was obviously wrong. Now, you know, that they're proliferated. That's why an un, a, a significantly undersized force when you're flying around in a stealth aircraft and then I'm fighting against you and your conventional aircraft and the first call you hear is, hey, the, the first four of your airplanes are all dead. And, and the psychological response to that is almost always the wrong response. The reaction, they, they, they behave erratically, they move in different directions, they, they don't know what to do. The psychological response to surprise is almost always the wrong reaction. And the power of creating that reaction in your opponents is really hard to overstate. And that's really one of the things that stealth airplanes have allowed us to do is get our opponents to behave incorrectly mm-hmm. to give us an even more of an advantage. You're gonna off balance them somehow. Yeah. Because what you just said, when you say they either overreact or underreact, guess what? You either, you're off balance, right? A balanced measured response would be like, okay, we didn't really get them off balance, but you either overreact or you underreact. Yeah. And through surprise, you cause them to move too far in one direction, too far in the other direction. That's what's going to happen, and that's what we're going to take advantage of. And, and you've explained this a ton. Like, if I attack your arm and you underreact to a point where you do not, almost don't react at all, and you just let me have it, then I may actually culminate with an armbar. Yeah. But more than likely, you're going to overreact, and I want you to overreact to that so that I can attack something else. Right. But it's like you said, it's, it's the lack of a balanced response. It's usually an overreaction, usually. Yep. 
that reveals a weakness somewhere else that I can then exploit. Yep.